Hello and welcome back to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. Let me get my distance away. There's no reverb. Um, thank you for watching. Um, especially a, a, a really good thank you for Rage Tron. You're still the man, even though it might take me a couple extra hours to put up NXT videos. I do appreciate the fact that you leave a comment. Therefore, just like I've always done to people, I leave comments and subscribe. You get a little video dedication. Oh, well, because of that, you get this. You're my tag team gif dedicated just to you. And Christopher, a new subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. It's always appreciated. And I'm on my road to 30 subscribers. Hopefully in, wow, four or five more months, I can get 960 more to be monetized. Getting my hours up there, which is good. And so, Christopher... This is my OMFG moment video just for you. And again, if you would like a special gift dedicated to yourself on YouTube, you can always feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, or send an email to hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Um, just a couple programming notes. <laughs> I kind of followed things up a little bit. Um, right after I post this video, I'm going to post my predictions for Survivor Series. Uh, my predictions still stand. My predictions aren't affected. My girlfriend's predictions. And in that, that video, you'll see some editing qualities. I did some post-production work for a change. As much as I can do in, in the hobo production office here in Daytona Beach. And my picks still stand. I think because my girlfriend likes the color blue and SmackDown's blue, she just went with SmackDown anyway. So her picks will stand too. Um, even if the substitutes win, I'll give her credit for that. I don't even think she knows who Brock Lesnar is, nor Ronda Rowdy Rossi. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Again, just like I previously did, you do two, th three of those few things. And likes I can't see, comments I can't see, subscribers I can see sometimes, and emails I can definitely see because I check those emails uh, probably once. I do that more frequently. Also, as far as programmings go, um, because Lucha Underground's over, I might do an impact impact review on Friday. If you like to do something on Friday, and then this Saturday it's War Games for NXT. So again, I'm still undergoing my suspension, although it seems like this is going a lot quicker than it did last time. Let's say I only have 30, 14. Yeah, I only have like 40 squad, about 50 days left. A little bit less. Actually, yeah, less than 50 days. I'll be back. So that means I'll be able to cover more stuff. Might be able to get catch the end of the Mix Match Challenge, which I'll, which I'll get to in another segment. Again, there's going to be a three parter, so you'll get your. Break, break, break between a couple segments. Well, let's talk about some WWE wrestling. Let's talk about Monday Night Raw. And again, let's start off with a pretty nice video tribute. And if you could tell by the gift I posted, it was this. Well, Veterans Day was celebrated the 12th, Veterans Day was the 11th. Again, always 
USA, USA. It was it was a nice tribute. Um, it opened with a battle royal, and for, this was for the tag team captaincy for Raw. You'll see my predictions later. But then Braun comes in, cleans house. Um, then calls out Baron Corbin. Stephanie McMahon shows up. Yeah, it makes stakes in it for Braun. Hey, Braun, if you win, you help Raw win. You get that universal title shot. It gives purpose, at least, and a reason. Then Ronda Rousey comes out and says, Oh, no, don't trust Steph. Not so many words. Corbin comes out, I'm in charge. Steph says, No, Corbin, I'm in charge. Steph, Steph knows how to deliver a good slap to the face, and Braun knows when to eat a slap, too, which is always good. And then we get to the wrestling part. Um, I don't like to grade the promo segments. Some of them are really good. Some are really bad. Some just are way too long. Um, this is not a thing I do. I know at what... No, cult of, No, yeah, what culture. They do the ups and downs for everything. I just like to do the wrestling matches. It's just a little bit easier. And if you went over every every segment, some of them are, are so short. It's like, really? Why was that there? I'd be a little bit more negative than I should be. I'm listening to my girlfriend. I'm trying to be more positive. Always be positive. I don't see lines like the power of positivity. I you do not. But again, the promos. You got in discussion about this. They're just not what they used to be. And the segments are what they are. It's a lot of filler. So I don't even bother with filler. I get right to the wrestling. So we had Ember Moon versus Tamina. This again was a really fun match. Again, you have the classic uh, clash of styles. Ember Moon, the speedier, much more, I want to say much more athletic, but, but somewhat quicker, more agile at least, rather than Tamina. Tamina, by the way, looks to be in great shape. I mean, so much better than she did a few months ago. I think she had some shoulder issues, I think. I don't think it was a knee issue. But she's back, and she looks great. Um, that outfit r really doesn't do her any good. Being tagged with Nia, Lisa have kind of similar outfits, which makes sense. And it always begs the question, when is the WWE going to get those women tag team titles? Or will they have to unearth them from the Jumping Bomb Angels? Old school reference. Again, this match was fun. Um, Nia Jax was there. Again, she provides the distraction. Wrestlers are the most easily distracted people around. Never knew why. And, of course, this allows Tamina to get the upper hand eventually. She pays tribute. I think her father or grandfather is, or was, Jimmy the Superfly Snuka. I forget if it was her dad or grandfather. Again, feel free to leave a comment. Say, like, hello, Tom, you don't know what you're talking about. That was her uncle. As far as I know, yeah, I, I thought it was a more closer relation, though. Or you could say, you know what, you're pretty close. It was her father. Oh, eh. It was her grandfather. It was pretty close. I just forget. Snuka was fairly old. I don't think Tamina's... I think she's in her... 30s? Maybe. Maybe Snuka was her father. I don't know. I know, I know the two are related. I know, I do know the two are related. I just forget how. Again, she paid tribute to him, doing doing the classic Superfly splash. That that was pretty cool. Um, it was a fun match, and it had the, a little nostalgia fact. It was a classic cheeseburger match. Then we get in, into a long Seth promo, and Corey Graves is in the ring. It was okay. Dean's there on the Titan, Titan Tron. You can tell he's in the back parking lot. He, he burned a shield vest. 
I really, I, I've kind of kept, I, I do kind of keep up on rumors somewhat. I really hope they don't do what they're planning to do, what the rumor mill says, and that is that Seth was having the affair with Renee Young. I don't know. Getting close relations involved like that, especially, I guess, in that kind of working environment where you really don't know the people is just kind of weird. It could be interesting. There is a whole potential of it for it to be really bad, though. I do appreciate the one line Ronda Rousey said. And again, if, if, if Dean and Renee were more open or more on more, I guess, more total divas, which, which they might be. I don't follow that show at all. That, that, yeah, I saw every so often I see an episode of it, I'm like, this is scripted. I know when I saw Total Bellas, it, it's, it was, it started off here and very quickly, week by week. Went downhill. I mean, I do appreciate Ronda Rousey's comment. The, the, the only door she managed to kick in was was to down Cena's bedroom. That was a good line because the whole crowd went, "Oh." So again, whatever it is. Um, next, there's another promo with Kurt Angle. It was good. It, it kind of highlighted what, what Drew did to him the previous week. It explained things. Um, Angle. Probably taking some more time off. I think he, I know. I want to say he's getting up there near fifties. I mean, he's been wrestling a long time, and he, again, he does have the the whole neck issue from his amateur days. And I know he had other issues when he was in TNA. So again, he probably needs a time off. He probably just said, "I just want a good swan song," and he had a good swan song. He got to put Drew over. That's a true professional there. Kurt Angle, you get a thumbs up. Um, then you have, so again, you have Drew in the ring cutting his promo. Um, Dolph, Dolph was there, and Finn Balor shows up. War of words between Finn and Drew. Then it's a match between Finn Balor and Dolph Ziggler. This was good stuff, because it's really you have a fast guy and a fast guy. So with that, it was a very fast... <laughs> I hate to say it, it was a very fast-paced match until Dolph goes to do all the sleeper holds. I mean, bows can sell like it's no one's business. I mean, they, they make each other look incredible. Um, both can take the bumps. This was, a, again, a really fun, good, classic wrestling match. And you know what? I enjoyed it. It was good. It was something new. It added in a little bit of element from... When Drew just dropped Finn with a Claymore, I mean, they've kind of, to some degree, Baron Corbin still beats it down. But again, Dolph and Finn, for the most part, about the same weight class. Roughly, Dolph might have a couple extra pounds on him. Finn's looking jacked. I'll give him that. He's, he's put on some muscle. I mean, they, they were showing close ups on his shoulders. They're, they're getting pretty, he's getting pretty beefy there. Because I know you can still see the scar from his torn labrum. I think I said that right. It was one of the ligaments in the shoulder. I want to say it's the labrum. Again, leave a comment and say, you don't know what you're talking about. You darn smelly hobo. It was something else. Something more, more medical. Again, this was a good, fun, classic match. I enjoyed it. The, the action was good. Um, Drew didn't... don't remember Drew interfering, but just him being there seemed more menacing, though. So this was... This was really good. This was a surf and turf match. And we go on. There was a shot of the Becky Lynch promo, what she said about Ronda Rousey. Then there's a Ronda Rousey promo. 
This is a Riot Squad promo, and, and at this point, there just seem to be a lot of promos. Um, the Riot Squad came out, just beat it, Natalia. Ruby Riot's tanner looking. I don't know if I like the tan Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot. Maybe I'm so used to the kind of paler looking Heidi Lovelace. It's it's different. And this time the whole Riot Squad came out in their own gear. Um, Liv Morgan came out without the Riot Squad shirt and just said Liv across, the, I guess, the sports bra and cut up yoga pants. Sarah Logan came out in, in her Kentucky woodsy girl stuff. I don't know. I still think WWE, if they ever do something, they have to realize, you know, just stay with one thing. I don't want to hear that, that she's also part Viking, whereas she was raised by her grandfather and bears. It gets confusing. One thing at a time, folks. Or if she does do something different, at least have her come back after her injury. Or she went on some like trip, went away for like a month to heal up, but then said, oh, she, she went to Norway and got into Viking crawls. I, that's a little bit better than just flip-flopping back and forth. Get it right first time. Then we have the Battle Royal, the Tag Team Battle Royal. It was really fun because the Lucha House Party was there. So they're being moved up, and that's probably because Raw has zero tag teams. And again, the Battle Royal was fun. It's what a Battle Royal is. If one person's eliminated, both people have to go out. I want to say Heath Slater was eliminated first. Then the Revival got eliminated. I'm like, the heck are the Revival be doing? They should be their freaking captains. But instead, um, the glorious team with Bobby Roode and Chad Gable. They won. Woohoo! I feel happy for Bobby Rudy fighting. He's finally doing something. It, it was fun. Everyone had their moments. There were, there were some good spots there. This is a cheeseburger match. And there's a Brock Lesnar promo. Paul, Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman promo. Gender tries to calm him down with his... Shanti. Did not work. He just managed to, to beat up the Singh brothers. Then you have Bobby Lashley versus Elias. Elias still has the funniest promos and just runs down Leo Rush. He calls child services. So yeah, there's this there's this kid in the ring and he's he's pointing at the pecs of, of, of a grown man. How old's the kid? Ten? No. He's in no physical harm. It just looks weird. <laughs> it's great. Elias turning face is probably the best thing that happened to him. And with Lashley, the fact that Lashley is now the narcissistic heel, that's actually really good for both men. Um, and then, so, so again, it's a really good match. I mean, it's a big guy versus big guy. Of course, Leo Rush does get involved in the match. Um, eventually, Leo Rush does get his comeuppance by Elias. It was really fun. It really showcased both men. They both um, they both showed that they were the big men of the WWE. Again, this is another fun match. This is another cheeseburger match. And then we have another Alexa Bliss Alexa Bliss promo when she introduces a woman and, and she says the next person who wins this match is going to be on the team. And we have um, Bank, uh, Sasha Banks versus Haley. It was good. It wasn't bad. Um, I guess it's a match with things and of course Alexa Bliss being a heel. This match kind of made sense because Alexa Bliss is a heel. She wants to break up the, the, the um, Boston hug connection, I guess. Sasha did seem more aggressive. Bailey again is going back to that tentative Bailey. I mean, she's still not too sure of herself. And I want to say, oh no, they just no, no, like 
So they got jumped. And Ruby Wright's actually in the match. Oh, the death they finished, baby! Nobody win. And for that reason, it was a ham sandwich match. And then the best part they say for last, and I honestly forget they had to go on the heart out, but Becky Lynch, with all the women in the ring, Becky Lynch goes in there and beats them all up. Um, then, uh, Nia Jax, like, just legit punched her in the eye. But she did get busted open, their stitches bruising. And I want to say she broke her orbital bone, which makes sense because that's right there. Um, I know she's been wrestling with a broken jaw. I don't think it was a full break. I think it was a hairline along the jaw. Yeah, and feel com feel free to comment if you if you know much more than I do. But again, she gets the chair in. Um, Becky Lynch stands tall. That's why I thought. That's why I, th I think Ronda Rousey is going to win again. You'll see our predictions soon. Oh, overall, it was just longish. A lot of promos, a lot of recaps, a lot of teases. The wrestling was good. Don't get me wrong. The wrestling was good. The show, them sticking to the heart out of just three straight hours. Oh, that was a short break. So now, with Raw being done, let me turn the page. Not yet. Another page. Time to talk about SmackDown. Again, this was really fun. Um, it started off recap of what happened to Becky Lynch, and for some reason, that arena really looked empty, especially on on weird shots. It looked like seats were empty because they all had that uniform line to them. Whereas, like, empty seats just looks like a straight line. And I know even from a distance, like, like, oh, like with, with people there, people's head shapes are different. So, again, if you go, it's like, oh, yeah, there, there, there we go. Oh, oh, no, no, there, there, there. This was one straight uniform line. It seemed to be a really empty arena. I might be wrong. It might just be the way the arena is made. But that harkens back to the days where... They used to give out tickets. The show, I think they used to do that really for the pay-per-views. One day I want to get in. I know Impact, I think, paid people to be wrestling fans. Well, I wanted to pay me 50 bucks. You know what? That was a ham sandwich match. Not anymore. No, it's a cheeseburger match. That cheeseburger match, that's a filet mignon match. Yep, you can just... Uh, oh, oh! Uh, sorry, guys. Filet mignon is as high, as high as I get. With that piece of toast interview. That, 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 that was the greatest promo ever! Really the worst. But, hey. Um, AJ Styles comes out. Um, Paul Heyman, then, is there. And he starts a promo. Yeah, he just riles off... All the names of those that have held the WWE Championship. One of those names is Daniel Bryan. And now we have a Daniel Bryan heel turn. Daniel Bryan says, if you say my name one more time, I'm going to punch you in the face. Daniel Bryan seems to like punching people in the face a lot. Again, there's a brawl ensues. Of course, because AJ Styles said Daniel Bryan. So he has to punch him in the face where he looks like a dope. Uh, brawl ensues, referees come out, um, keeps on going. Then we have our first match, which was Andrade Cien Almas versus Jeff Hardy. Almas is so good. Um, I know there's been rumors that, that Vince is really, really up on Almas. They have to give Almas some wins, though, because he's getting, he's getting in quality losses. I mean, to lose to Jeff Hardy, and I, I know it's a contrived sport. And there are no, I think there used to be like wins and loss columns. But that was back in the day of like Gorilla Monsoon though. And almost his strong style, I mean, he, he knows, 
he knows how to get the most out of himself and his opponent. He tried to tranquilo. You do not tranquilo against a, against a Hardy that he got kicked right out of the ring from the tranquilo post. Yeah, it's a classic Hardy match. Can't say anything wrong. I don't know how Jeff's able to do it so long. But when Matt, I think, is out, I want to say Matt actually has a backstage position now, which is good. It still keeps him involved. I'm sure the traveling schedule is a lot less. Um, I know, I think his issue is that the, I want to say some of the lumbar vertebrae were beginning to fuse to his pelvis just from years from abuse. I can't feel good. I should have to bend over a lot. Put on bone contact. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that in my my advanced years. Again, almost always has a good showing. He just he just really needs a good quality win. I mean, again, this was a fun match. Um, Hardy did win with a twist of fate and then the Swanton Bomb. This was a good cheeseburger match. So it's really hard to complain about. Then uh, Paige is backstage with The Miz. And then at some point, I think they, they continue the brawl between AJ and Daniel Bryan, um, which has up for a match later, which is which is a rematch. It was it was good. Not big on rematch. I just saw this two weeks ago. So, well, we'll see. So Paige and Miz. Miz is now the sole captain. He's there with his... his, his Marine 6 DVD. And he says, well, you're going to fight Ray because Miz tr tries to make wholesale changes. Like, no, if, if Ray wins, he's in. You, you keep him in. So if, if, if you want Ray out, you have to beat him. Makes sense. It gives the match some stakes. This was a really good match. The Miz is so sharp. Um, there's even new stuff from the Miz. He did a bounce off the top row po sitting powerbomb on, on Ray. Never saw that before. That was good. Again, you have you put together two workers like Miz and Rey Mysterio. This was a really fun match. I mean, Rey's the quicker. The Miz is a little bit smart. He knows when to put the knees up. I mean, he he can do he can do stuff though. Um, the only thing is that the what gets Miz and it it, it gets every heel is humorous. Just some complaints to the ref. Why is it a three pull? Oh, and then and I get pinned. What happened there? Again, Ray gets the quick pin. This was a again really fun, amazing match. SmackDown puts on the probably the best wrestling matches between the two brands, not including NXT because that's a whole different beast. But again, this was a good surf and turf quality match. And then out of nowhere, Randy Orton strikes. But Rey Mysterio is a little bit quicker. He gets out of the way of, of, of one RKO. However, the Miz is not so quick. He's a smarter wrestler, just not too quick on his feet. So he bumps into Randy Orton. <laughs> he already gives him another RKO. <laughs> the Miz is absolutely flabbergasted. Why am I getting RKO'd all the time? It's like, no wonder I didn't pick you. You just RKO'd me. I don't want him on my team. Um, then we have another kind of semi-long promo uh, with the, all the women of SmackDown. Uh, the bad news is Becky cannot wrestle. She's not medically cleared. Again, I think she broke her orbital bone. The stitches I don't think would really keep her out. But I know WWE has a new concussion policy. How Becky could wheel a chair in a match or in a promo with some semblance of, of, of where people were. I think I've had one or two concussions before. That was back in the day where you just got your bell rung and they busted out the ammonium salts. So it is what it is. Um, Becky really seemed emotional. She looked upset. And gosh darn, Becky looks cute without makeup. You could tell because sometimes the makeup... And WWE put way too much on. I could probably use a little lightning stuff up there too. But they put way too much on because once she came out and looked like plastic face. 
She's like, ugh. But she came out lo looking, I mean, normal. I mean, I, yeah, she did. She had her eyeliner on and stuff, but there was nothing over the top, I guess. There's nothing cartoonish looking about her. She just looks cute. Um, I guess the only thing I wanted, I still wanted her to be healed, Becky, a little bit. And I know there's time I know there's time constraints, and they do have to get other matches, and and they have to change plans. If I was if I was Becky Lynch, or if I was one of the the lead writers for WWE, or probably some low level schmuck writer, I would say, you know what, Becky Lynch goes in there. I'm the man. I want to see which one of you can take my place. Referee, ring the bell. Battle royal over the top. Charlotte Flair could still win. She it could be her versus Asuka. Asuka, something fluky happens to her. And it was really funny because the again, Becky just did choose Charlotte to represent her because again she's not medically cleared. You know, she probably has to take time to heal up her jaw. I don't know where I don't know where she broke it. I don't think it's a full I don't think it's a full break. And then I think they said they well, according to to um Rome, she broke her face. Don't break your face. Break her orbital bone. So she she might have a, a fractured orbital bone. I think that happens. That's a really common hockey fight injury. So it's not it's not like she's going to be out too long. I think they just kind of like literally like reset it and just say, listen, you can't do anything for a while. Let it heal up a little bit. Um, that Becky was definitely emotional. Again, if I was Becky, I would just be like, fight it out amongst yourselves. Um, Charlotte, Charlotte got the hug from Becky. Becky kind of broke character, went went back to being nice, nice, good girl Becky, I guess. GG Becky. And the only two people that did not congratulate or hug Charlotte were the iconics. They were just standing there. Oh, you have to smile? Do the little pose thing. Good job, Charlotte. That was it. Those two, it was that real awkward moment. It was funny, though. <laughs> All the other women are like hugging her. They're like, oh, Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlotte. I think if you look at that, Kyrie's are like, really? Again, it was fun. And then we have. The next match, uh, the New Day versus the Bar. This is such a good classic match. Um, I really just hope they don't beat this to death over time, because I can see this match getting old a little bit. Where the big sh the Big Show gets in, and he winds up winning the match for the Bar all the time. If they do that a couple times, or at least space it out. It'll be good if if it's Tuesday night after Tuesday night after Tuesday night. It's like oh again. Again, again. But again, this is really good. I mean, it's such a classic matchup. The New Day and The Bar are so good at tag team wrestling. They understand tag team ideologies. Um, they understand when to double team, how to double team. Um, I know people hear about this, but you cut the ring off in half, keep, keep your opponent in your half of the ring so he can't make the tag. You do the sneaky things. You hold them while the partner hits them. Um, you do that five count where it's like, hey, I can take advantage. I can be in the ring until four, so I'll take advantage of that. We have double team moves. We we we, we can perform double team spots. That's just so good. It's so hard to go through everything. Again, they did. I think the double gut buster. I think on Xavier. No, yeah, maybe Xavier Woods. Then of course the Big Show gets tagged in. Um. Kofi Kingston goes up to the top rope. He, he gets he gets the knockout punch from the Big Show. And I mean, C Cesaro and Sheamus really gelled together as a tag team, and everyone wondered how, how they'll really work together. And they just seem to really gel. I mean, this is a good this is a good classic tag team surf and turf match. And then the match of the evening from Gainesville, Georgia. In this corner, AJ 
Styles. And the challenger in this corner from Hicksville, from, I forget, I know it's Washington. Washington. I just don't like the state of Washington. A bunch of bush hippies up there. And coffee drinkers. Daniel Bryan. Of course, they say it with much more enthusiasm. This was an amazing match. It started off as a hard striking match. Um, a lot of top rope stuff by AJ Styles. Um, Daniel Bryan still very traditionally works over the arm. That's kind of his finisher with the arm. Um, I mean... I mean, there were some good elements. Um, it just seemed like everyone almost forgot really about the match they had two weeks ago. So, again, it was good. It was good. It was really darn good. Um, again, it's one of those things you say, oh, I could watch these two wrestle all the time, as long as it's not every every week or even every other week. And then all of a sudden, um, AJ Styles got thrown into the referee. Daniel Bryan turns heel. Daniel Bryan can't turn heel. He's the ultimate babyface. The Miz is right. The Miz is exactly right about Daniel Bryan. All hail the Miz. Miz, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. My camera just froze up too. That's not a good sign. That's a funny pose though. But my camera, my camera's not the best. At, at, can't do things way too quick. But getting back to this, um, again, he went full heel now. And Daniel Bryan's the new WWE champion. And again, this was an amazing match. This was a not, not as good a match, but again, it's still a surf and turf quality match. And hopefully this leads up to hopefully Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles at WrestleMania. Again, let's take our third little break. There we go. That's a little bit better. Yeah, my camera, if you do things too quickly, it's a good camera, not the best camera. Let's talk about some mixed match challenge. Um, for this, actually, it, was, it seemed to go really quick. Um, there weren't, there were very little antics before each match. Um, and, and, and Michael Cole, you dolt. You're on SmackDown now. This isn't Raw. Dummy. Vince has to speak more in his earpiece, I guess. It's like, yes, and this is a mixed match challenge after Raw. And I'm like, what? No. This is a SmackDown. This is Tuesday. I hope it's Tuesday. Oh, I missed work today. That would suck. Yeah, so again, this is Tuesday. So that means it's SmackDown. Looking at my calendar. Even my cell phone says it's Tuesday. So it has to be SmackDown. Michael Cole, you confused me. Raw's on Monday. So the first match, you have Country Dominance, which is the team of Bob, Bobby Lashley. And Mickey James, I don't know what her name is, but I know it's just Braun Strowman and Ember Moon. So that's pretty cool, though. Country, Country Ember, or Country Moon? No. E Eclipse these hands? Maybe. Eclipse these hands sounds right. Tell you what, Ember Moon look all oh, compared to Braun Strowman. They had the fist bump. Where's my cat at? That'd be a good comparison. Like, if I went to go fist bump my cat, then my hand would be Braun Strowman's hand. My cat's paw would be Ember Moon's fist. Huge difference. Again, in the comparison between Braun, and I've seen Ember Moon live, she is short, but very thickly built. Someone's going to say, oh, you can't call her thick. Or you can't see Tamina looks good. Yes, I can. 
I mean, nothing's wrong to say that Ember Moon is very powerful looking. Oh, other women very thick looking. Especially when it comes to muscular thickness then. Um, she has very powerful looking legs or quads and hamstrings. Um, very well defined, built up upper body. Um, and actually, to her credit, a really normal looking midsection. And a bubble butt. Oh, you didn't hear me say that though. Again. Um, so, so sorry to, and, um, Mickey James still looks, oh, there's a funny video of Mickey James on the Jenny Jones show, or is it the, I don't know, one of those shows. She comes off the split. I guess she was like nerdy looking in high school or something. You can go find it on YouTube. Um, again, the women start off the show with a lot of this by women. Um, they start running the ropes. There's a trade of pinfalls. Then eventually, again, you have the mar the marquee matchup of Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman, which is really just big versus bigger. So again, it, it looks semi-realistic. It's like, yeah, if Bobby Lashley runs into Braun Strowman, who's bigger than him, Bobby Lashley's going to bounce back a little bit. Not get hurt, but just get bounced back a little bit. And then, of course, Leo Rush. I just want to see Leo Rush get those hands. Um, again, Ember Moon, she chases Leo Rush. Unfortunately, then gets hit by a kick from Mickey James. And eventually, then again, Braun starts to chase Leo Rush and just runs over Lashley. It was fun. Again, with this match, very few antics. And my question is, I think they, they're, at the, they're at the end of the round robin part. So now they go to the single elimination part. Which leads me to question when this tournament actually ends. So my suspension is up the 31st. So if they end this week. One. Two. I guess they'd have to end. I guess on the 18th, Christmas is actually on a SmackDown Tuesday. Maybe it ends the 18th of December. Darn, I won't be able to cover it live or semi-live or live stream yet. So again, it was, it was fun. Um, the other th cool thing about Ember Moon is that she doesn't wear the pantyhose like the other woman does. She goes all natural. I like that. Again, Ember Moon hits the eclipse on Mickey James. Can't read my own handwriting. They pick up the win, and I think they go undefeated now. Um, in the second match, again, because AJ Styles was in no condition to fight, they picked a new partner for, I guess, Extreme Flair instead of Phenomenal Flair because it was, woo, Charlotte Flair and Jeff Hardy versus Asuka. And the, the pairing, well, I don't know. During the introductions, you could hear them talk about ordering pizza and stuff. So I don't know where that came from. I think they left their mics on and it was a botch. This whole match was this was, was this was the worst mixed match challenge match yet. It was so botched, so obvious. I know it's choreographed, but you have good choreography. You have okay choreography. You have bad choreography. And then ranks of bad choreography. You have the hobo wrestling match. This actually was right before the hobo wrestling match. And really bad stuff. It was fun. But, I mean, you could tell, like, the Miz was literally stopping himself before his head hit the turnbuckle or the delete things. Because you could tell, because those things are soft as pillows. You're not going to get a concussion. They have, like, so, they, they actually, I want to say the canvas is made from, like, body bag stuff. 
but they have really like space age foam, like bed foam stuff. I mean, it's like literally like. So when he really stops and it's really obvious, I mean, Oscar was pretty bad. I think he was supposed to jump over Rick over Charlotte Flair. And her legs caught Charlotte Flair's legs, and she like tripped and fell. Just really bosh. Um, Asuka does have a cool mask. We'll give her that. There's always something positive. I did want to see the Miz pull off a Yano on Jeff Hardy, where there was where he where he was going to give the Miz the the Marine Six CD as a gift, and there's powder in it. It's like, oh, here, here, take this, take this. And, and that's a classic spot Yano did with Kenny Omega. And, and then and thing up, and all this powder came into Kenny's face. But of course, Yano being Yano decides to undo all the turnbuckles. But Kenny, when he's unblighted, looks around, and there's no turnbuckle padding on anything. Again, it, it, that's why Yano is, is one of my favorite New Japan wrestlers. He does, his antics are really good. They're all wrestling base, and they're and he does everything, not just for fun, but to give him that heelish edge. But he has a still comic effect to it. He's like, it's fun. It makes wrestling fun. Kenny Omega's again. Kenny Omega could have could have a ham sandwich match against the broom. Because <laughs> who was Kota Bushi versus a blow up doll? The blow up doll was hitting Canadian Destroyer after Canadian Destroyer and Kotobushi. That's great. Yeah, I wanted to see the Miz just do something. Um, they they tried to do almost a four way chant where it was woo, delete, yay, boo. I mean, they could have done that, and that that, that crowd would have been hyped. Crowds kind of seem to get dead. I think they were exhausted a little bit from all the stuff that happened before, mainly with AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan. Um, there was a four-way delete. That would have been the best. And Flair and Oscar just seemed, it seemed technical, but then it got really botched. And you knew that they weren't taking it that serious because both Charlotte and Asuka still, still had their t-shirts on. And they carried... Most of the match, because I know the men had a match before. They had their spots. It, I hate to do it, but I'll be honest and somewhat objective. This this was really a can of, this was really a can of soup match. So I mean it is what it was. I mean, the previous match was a cheeseburger match. I, I, don't know, I forget if I said that, but I'll add that in there because I do have some production capabilities. And I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And probably tonight I'll post... Well, probably tomorrow morning I'll post this video up. Later tomorrow I'll post up my prediction or our predictions, my girlfriend and I's predictions. Again, with some production quality, be on the lookout for those on our picks for the Survivor Series. And we might, I don't know, I might do an NXT TakeOver prediction match. Might do some NXT predictions. A call on that. Woohoo! Everyone have a good night, and we'll 